Deion Sanders is considered one of the best defensive players in football history, but he also played baseball, where he got arrested in his own team stadium twice, attempted to take his own life in the middle of a season, and after getting so much criticism by a broadcaster, got revenge on him in a way that people in baseball media literally described as assault. <laughs> Real man, Dion, I'll say that. By the end of his career, dozens of his baseball teammates described Deion Sanders as one of the best teammates they've ever played with. But when he left the Yankees to start the NFL season in 1989, he said most of his teammates were, quote, happy to see him go. When he joined the Yankees, his own manager said that Dion was, quote, going to get embarrassed. The next year, the Falcons threatened to sue the Yankees. Dion himself filed a grievance against the Yankees, and a baseball legend called him a, quote, piece of shit on the field, causing a fight. Dion's persona made him one of the flashiest and richest athletes of his era. But for many old school baseball people, this was a bad thing, which is why despite accomplishing things in baseball that have not and will never happen again, Dion experienced a ton of backlash, like the time in the minors when he was getting heckled so badly from the crowd, he got arrested for going into the stands and allegedly assaulting one of them. Yes, because while Dion was becoming a star in All-American Jim Thorpe Award winner and consensus top draft pick in football, while in college, he simultaneously played minor league baseball. In fact, he considered skipping college football altogether. He was drafted in the sixth round of the MLB draft out of high school and offered 75 grand to play for the Royals. According to them, Dion verbally agreed to a contract. They sent a scout to his home to make him a full-time professional baseball player. But the scout was scared of being in Dion's neighborhood at night, so he decided to wait and show up the next day instead. During this time, Dion changed his mind. The scout was immediately fired for hesitating, but according to Dion, it was actually the manager of the Royals who went behind the organization's back and convinced Dion out of the goodness of his heart to go to college knowing he was going to get more money if he waited four years. And that's what he did. He batted 333 as a freshman on a team that made it to the College World Series. The next year, he played in a conference tournament game on the baseball team, then rushed to the conference track tournament, and according to him, raced in baseball pants. The team won the conference tournament in track, and then he literally ran back to the baseball field for another baseball game, where he hit the game-winning RBI to earn his second conference championship on the same day. By this point, Dion was already an All-American in football and decided to quit baseball to focus on football for his junior year. That spring, the Yankees drafted him anyway. And Dion accepted it. While still being enrolled at FSU, Dion played for the Yankees rookie ball team in Florida over the summer, got paid $10,000 a week, and in August, he returned to FSU for his senior football season, where Dion Sanders was prime time. A character of a larger than life arrogant athlete, he says he created in college in order to make the most amount of money as possible. The accounts of many people around Dion say he wasn't really like this, but while on camera, portrayed himself as the flashiest and cockiest version of himself as possible to get all the attention he could, and it worked. By the end of his senior season, he was one of the biggest stars in college football, as well as a top NFL prospect, but just months before he was set to make millions in the NFL draft, he returned to the Yankees, where his teammates really didn't seem to like him. Despite barely playing baseball over the past two seasons, he was assigned to Major League Spring Training, originally assigned number 71, a number this high is typically given to minor leaguers in big league camp who the team knows won't make the roster, aka nobodies. Dion technically was one of these players. However, he was Dion Sanders. His agent requested he get a lower number, and the Yankees agreed, giving him the lowest number available, number 30, a number that had been worn by Yankees great Willie Randolph 
for the past 13 seasons before leaving for the Dodgers. Veteran Yankees were outraged. It became front page news. One anonymous player told the media it was straight arrogance. When Ron Guidry was told he wanted a single digit number, he said, quote, this isn't Florida State. As camp progressed, Dallas Green told media he's not prepared to play baseball. He's a great athlete who has no business being embarrassed. And he will be embarrassed because he's not prepared. This was Dion's own manager. And there was truth to this. Dion himself admitted that he was, quote, married to football and baseball was just his girlfriend. He had only played 28 baseball games in the past two years, and everyone knew he was going to be a top pick in the NFL within a few months. However, Dion saw baseball as the perfect bargaining tool. He started the season in the minors and performed surprisingly well. Going into the NFL draft, Dion threatened teams that he didn't want to play for, saying that if they drafted him, he would just ask for way too much money, then just play baseball and re-enter the draft the next year. And this worked perfectly. The teams he didn't want to play for were scared to pick him, and he fell to the fifth overall pick with the Falcons, his dream destination. The Yankees, who saw Dion as an asset, knew they needed to convince him to stay in baseball. So after just 62 professional games, they called him up to the major leagues. At just 21 years old, a month after getting drafted in the NFL, he was a New York Yankee. Dion's tone changed about baseball, saying he didn't need football, that the Yankees could pay him just as much as Atlanta, and that if, quote, football paid me $1.3 million and baseball paid me more, he'd just start playing baseball. Now, the Falcons had to convince him to play football. It was clear Dion was using baseball as leverage, trying to get the biggest contract possible. However, in the majors, he struggled and was sent down in June. While there, he was getting abused by fans in Richmond. They started targeting Dion as well as his wife. So after being removed from the game, he confronted the hecklers in the stands while the game was going on and allegedly assaulted one of them. Later, he was arrested in his hotel room for this. According to Dion, the fans provoked him by saying something racial, and even though he just briefly grabbed one of them, the guy had ripped his own shirt to shreds to make it look like Dion beat him up. He ended up getting fined by his team and getting the charges dropped after donating enough money to the Russian Braves that they were able to build a new handicap section. During this time, Dion was still negotiating with the Falcons, threatening to just play baseball and re-enter the draft the next year if they didn't pay him what he wanted, which seemed possible. The Yankees had called him back up to the majors, and in limited time in September, he hit well. Also, he had already missed most of training camp. But three days before the Falcons' first game, he signed a four-year, $4.4 million contract, making him the highest-paid defensive back in NFL history without playing a single game. Three days later, he returned his second ever punt return for a touchdown in his first game without going to a practice all summer, becoming the first player in history to score a touchdown and hit a home run in the same week. Even without training camp, Dion was instantly one of the best defenders in the league, and the threat of playing baseball full-time made him millions of dollars in negotiation. He was about to take this strategy to another level, but some people in baseball really didn't like it. Like Carlton Fisk, a future Hall of Famer and 42-year-old veteran, when a 22-year-old Deion Sanders came to the plate and according to Fisk, drew a dollar sign in the dirt, he was infuriated. Then, when Dion popped out a few pitches later and didn't hustle to first, he took this as blatant disrespect and screamed at Dion. Dion says he never drew a dollar sign in the dirt and just had a ritual where he would draw a line in the dirt where he wanted to put his back foot. According to Fisk, the next time Dion came to the plate, he told him, quote, the days of slavery are over. Fisk was outraged, confronted Dion, and the bench is clear. Unlike football, Dion tried his best not to be overly flashy in baseball, but opponents still found him to be arrogant, like when he hit his first major league home run. His shoe came untied, not thinking anything of it, tied it while he touched home plate. 
The Brewers were pissed at Dion for breaking an unwritten rule, and he was probably just confused on why anyone would care. Later in his career, he had a similar run-in with Kurt Schilling. Months earlier, Dion stole second against Schilling, then immediately stole third. However, his team was winning 6-0. Schilling decided this was a blowout and concluded that Dion was breaking an unwritten rule. So, when he faced him again in June, he tried to nail him with a pitch. Escaping a terrifying pitch by inches, Dion confronted Schilling on the field and the benches cleared. After the game, Dion said Schilling had no heart and only threw at him because he knew he wasn't going to have to face them until September. Schilling responded by saying that Dion is a guy who quits on his team halfway through the year to play football if they're out of the race, saying he hasn't done anything in baseball and called him a glorified flag football player who can run. Early in his career, his reputation amongst veterans was that he was just a mediocre player who only got opportunities because he was good at football and had a larger than life off the field persona, which in the sport of baseball at the time was very much frowned upon. But the Yankees owner George Steinbrenner loved it. After a successful rookie year for the Falcons, he came back and put up terrible numbers. But in July, he was hitting leadoff and starting in center. When asked if the Yankees just made these moves to make him happy, Dion said, quote, what do you think? The Yankees believed if Dion committed himself to baseball full-time, he'd be one of the best players in the league, as well as the most marketable. So they offered him a 14-month contract worth $2.5 million. Over his first two seasons, he had the fifth worst batting average in baseball, the ninth worst on-base percentage, and a negative war. According to that, him being on the field was actually hurting his team and the Yankees offered him a contract that would have made him one of the highest paid players in the league. This upset teams across the league and even Yankees teammates were mad. One of them publicly told the media, quote, aren't you supposed to be good at this game to make that kind of money? But the Yankees knew in order to get Dion full time, they would have to outbid the Falcons and the Falcons claim that was illegal. They threatened to sue the Yankees if Dion signed a contract that prevented him from playing football because the contract they already had with Dion required him to leave the Yankees and go to training camp at the end of July. But right before he was supposed to leave for football, Dion agreed to a contract with the Yankees that made him a full-time baseball player. Then, all of a sudden, the deal fell apart. Backlash across the league, a potential lawsuit from the Falcons, and the trouble George Steinbrenner was already in with the league caused the Yankees to change their mind at the last second. Dion was pissed. His team says the deal was already agreed upon and that they would be filing a grievance. Dion left the Yankees that day, saying most of his teammates were, quote, happy to see him go. According to his agent, the day the deal fell apart, they informed the Yankees that he would never play for them again. He reported to training camp two weeks late and was fined 35 grand by the Falcons, and that offseason was officially released by the Yankees. His next baseball stop was the Atlanta Braves. In the same city as the Falcons, it was the perfect fit. His two-sport status exploded. From February until July, he was a full-time baseball player. But at the end of each July, he became a full-time football player. In 1991, however, the Braves were in the playoff hunt. Dion wanted to help. He was attempting to be the first player ever to play baseball and football at the same time. And on September 25th, 1991, he did it. On the day he was named the Defensive Player of the Week in the NFL, he showed up to Falcons practice at noon, practiced until 3.30, took a helicopter to the Brave Stadium while the game was going on, got dressed, and entered as a pinch runner at 7.30, and stole a base. It was an historic achievement, but the Falcons didn't really seem pleased. One player told the media, quote, Dion's ego is going to hurt us, and this might be the time. Dion only played five games before the baseball season ended and returned to the Falcons, but his whole attitude about baseball completely changed. He had just made his first Pro Bowl, was second team All-Pro, but in April 1992, he told the media, 
he was a full-time baseball player, saying, quote, the only way I have a chance to be successful in baseball is to give it a shot for a full season. And he dominated. Dion was proving that when focusing on baseball, he could be one of the best players in the league and finish May as the third most valuable player in baseball. People questioned whether Dion saying he was 100% committed to baseball was true or if it was just a negotiation tactic to get more money from the Falcons. Turns out it was both. When he was supposed to report to Falcons training camp in August, he was by far the most productive player on the Braves. So the Falcons, desperate for his services, offered him an extra $1 million just to come to training camp, even though his current contract with them already required him to do so. He turned this down, skipped training camp, and stayed with the Braves into September. A week into the NFL season, the Falcons were desperate and offered Dion a brand new $1.9 million contract, as well as a new clause that allowed Dion to return to the Braves during the MLB playoffs. Meaning, the Falcons paid Dion an extra $1.2 million this season even though he skipped training camp completely and had to miss three games to play baseball. This season will go down as one of the most impressive in sports history. Even though he missed 40% of the baseball season to play football, he still led the entire league in triples. He was also first team all pro and was the leading vote getter for the Pro Bowl in cornerback as well as punt returner, even though he sat out three NFL games to play baseball this year. And that wasn't even the most impressive thing he did. That happened in October. And even though it was an achievement that will never happen again, people in baseball seem to hate him for it. You are a real man, Dion, I'll say that. When Dion left the Braves in September, he had an agreement with the team that he would come back for the playoffs as a, quote, full-time player. However, he was still under contract with the Falcons, so when it turned out the Braves had a playoff game on the same day the Falcons had a regular season game, Dion had to make a decision. He chose both. On Saturday, he played for the Braves in a playoff game, left the stadium at midnight, arrived in Miami at 4 a.m., played a football game at 1 p.m., took a helicopter to the airport, then boarded a flight, flew all the way to Pittsburgh to make the playoff game just in time for first pitch. Dion was about to make history, and the Braves benched him. He was the biggest story in sports and trying to do something never done before, but his own general manager told the media that if he knew Dion was going to do this, he would have left him off the postseason roster altogether. To Dion, being a full-time player meant making every game, but since he still had a contract with the Falcons, he could still do football when there was no baseball going on. But the Braves thought it meant that baseball would be his only focus and he wouldn't go to football practice or games until the playoffs were over. So did Tim McCarver. He was a broadcaster during this series and made multiple remarks about Dion playing two sports. Dion's doing a rather self-centered thing, Tim. Absolutely. Going there tomorrow. How can he leave in the playoffs? Dion got word of this criticism, so when they won the series, he looked for revenge. During the celebration, he filled up multiple buckets of water and drenched him with it. This made Dion Sanders public enemy number one in the baseball world. The media called him playing both in one day, a publicity stunt for Nike, labeled him as a punk, called him a child, and called him a jerk. He was fined $1,000, and the Braves reportedly questioned leaving him off the World Series roster altogether. Dion did make the roster didn't show up to any Falcons practices or games, batted over 500 and had five steals while having a broken foot. Most likely he would have been World Series MVP had the Braves won. But the damage was done. Dion felt playing for the Braves while still under contract with the Falcons and injured was doing the Braves and his teammates a favor. Braves GM John Sherholtz thought the opposite and Dion thought he was using the media to make him look bad, saying he would never be able to forgive him. The Braves GM responded by saying, there are people who would hurt me if they insulted me. Dion Sanders isn't one of them. These problems persist to the next year when coming off a season when he was the Braves' most productive player, he only started six of the team's first 
20 games. Dion told the media it was, quote, the biggest betrayal in sports history and speculated he was benched because the Braves were trying to get back at him for not signing a long-term contract with the team. At the end of April, his father tragically passed away. Heartbroken, Dion left the team for the funeral and didn't return. The Braves GM said Dion was ineligible to play and said he wasn't sure if he had quit the team or not. He missed 19 days, lost 11000 per day, losing a total of $209,000 out of his $1 million salary. But Dion eventually did return and even signed a three-year deal with the Braves to stay in Atlanta. However, only a year later, the Braves traded him to Cincinnati. To Dion, this was just the team and GM trying to get back at him again, saying, John Sherholtz has never been straight with me. Dion's time with the Yankees and the Braves both ended with extremely toxic fights between him and his own team. From the outside looking in, it was easy to see Dion as an arrogant clubhouse cancer both teams couldn't wait to get rid of. But his teammates had the opposite impression. Dave LaPointe called him, quote, maybe the most misread player ever. Steve Sachs said that he had a preconceived notion of Dion, but said in reality, he was humble and respectful. Chipper Jones called him his favorite brave of all time. And Tom Glavin said that when the team signed Dion, players were scared of what he was, only to find out he was an amazing teammate. When Dion was on the way to Cincinnati, the team's clubhouse manager says the Reds were also worried about his personality. But when he got there, he was 100% the opposite, saying he was quiet, he fought for the rookies, and was humble. People outside of the clubhouse in Cincinnati probably didn't feel this way, especially after he got arrested at the stadium for allegedly riding a scooter where he wasn't supposed to, then dragged a security guard who tried to stop him 15 feet while trying to get away. It was a big news story. However, it was probably somewhat exaggerated as Dion was completely exonerated two years later. In baseball, the peak of his on-the-field accomplishments were behind him. However, perhaps the darkest and most life-changing event in Dion's life happened in Cincinnati while playing baseball. Dion once again seemed to be using baseball as leverage, proclaiming before the 1994 season that he was done with football and would play baseball full time while pursuing being a rapper and an actor. He then signed with the 49ers, won Defensive Player of the Year and a Super Bowl, then went to the Cowboys, won another Super Bowl, had a rap album out, was on every TV commercial and hosted SNL pretty much all at the same time. But according to Dion, he was empty. After the Super Bowl, he says he was the first one to leave the stadium, went to the hotel room, and just went to sleep. The next year, he didn't play baseball. For the first time maybe ever, he actually had a full training camp. He was not only a pro bowler and first team all pro cornerback that year, he also was the Cowboys' second leading receiver. After the season, he says he still felt empty and needed a new challenge. He returned to the Reds, but this also didn't work. He was in the midst of a divorce and spiraling out of control. According to Dion, while playing for the Reds this year, he went on a stretch where he didn't sleep for three days and lost 10 pounds. He even ate an entire bottle of Tylenol in front of his teammates as a cry for help, but nobody realized anything was wrong. And in the middle of the season, he drove his car 65 to 70 miles per hour off a road down a 30 to 40 foot drop on purpose in a suicide attempt. Somehow, Dion walked away uninjured. He missed the Reds next game and news of the accident hit the papers. However, nobody had any idea he tried to take his own life. He justified the incident by telling the media that, quote, situations just caught up with me. It's okay now. I shouldn't miss any more games. And only two days after trying to take his own life, he was back with the Reds playing. Despite all of this, Dion was second in the National League in steals while missing 47 games 
to play football. But that was the least of his worries. During this time, Dion fully committed to religion and his family and seemingly found peace. He stepped away from baseball again, playing football exclusively for three seasons, but once again, he couldn't stay away. He returned to the Reds and went off in an historic game. In Dion's first game back, he got three hits, three RBIs, including a homer, and even stole a base after not playing a game for three years. However, his production wavered and was eventually released by the Reds. Dion seemed to want to have nothing to do with playing for the Redskins that year, signed a minor league deal to avoid going to training camp, and at the end of August, was still in the minors and contractually obligated to go to the Redskins. Dion left the team, but instead of playing for Washington, elected to retire, ending his two-sport career for good at 33 years old. Eventually, Dion did come back. Taking another three years off, Dion returned to football at 37, and in his final year, at 38, he played in every single game and was the team's leader in interceptions. He was undoubtedly one of the greatest football players ever, while skipping training camp almost every year to play baseball, where he briefly reached elite status in the most elite league in the world while only playing five months a year. Doing both pushed him to his physical and mental limits. It might have nearly cost him his life, but he also accomplished things that will never be accomplished again.